And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of the Shadow People. Elaine, have you been... I mean, have you seen anything else since you spoke to me last? No, I haven't. Ever since Mother died, nothing's happened. Well, I only hope... <laughs> It came from upstairs. Come on. You don't I don't know what to say. I only hope that... David. David, if anything's happened to him... We'll see in a moment. There's no light in this room. You wait here, Elaine. Where's the light? Over to your left. David. What's wrong? Why didn't you leave the light on? Your father's dead, Elaine. In just a moment, the Hall of Fantasy will present The Shadow People. And now for our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Shadow People. Somewhere along the line of your life, you've met them. You have come in contact with The Shadow People. When did we first discuss it? Oh, yes, Brian and Elaine and I. It was in my apartment. There was only one light on in the entire place. Oh. What's wrong? Oh. Elaine, what's the matter? Oh, it's, it's silly, I know, but I, I, I thought I saw something in that doorway over there. Where? Over there, right over there. Where are you going, David? Over to that archway, just to let you know that nothing's here. <laughs> you see, Elaine, nothing's wrong, nothing at all. Are you satisfied that there's no one else here but us? Yes, I... Oh, I'm sorry. I just thought that I... Leave the overhead lights on. I'm sorry. I thought that... Put them back on, David, please. All right, Elaine. Look, what's bothering you, sis? I don't know. It's just that... I don't know. Tell us about it, Elaine. Tell us what's bothering you. You promise that you... You won't laugh at me? Of course not. Brian? Oh, Elaine, I'm your brother. If something's troubling you, I'd like to know about it. All right, then. The reason I was so upset was the fact that I saw someone or something standing in that archway. But Elaine, David showed you that there was no one else in here. When the lights were put on, you saw for yourself that we were alone. I'm not talking about something you you can see in the light, Brian. I'm not talking about a human being. Then what's it all about, Elaine? In the darkness, I, I saw something that can't be seen in a lighted area. And I've seen it several times before. You're sure you're not imagining this, Elaine? Oh, I don't have that good an imagination, Brian. How long have you... Have you seen this thing, Elaine? Well, it... It started about six weeks ago. You were in Detroit on business, Brian. Mom and Dad were on vacation. I was in the house by myself. In the library. There was only one light on. I sat in the chair beneath it, reading. Several times I thought that something was watching me. I felt there was someone in the room with me, standing right in back of me. Every so often, I'd glance back over my shoulder, but there seemed to be nothing there. And then, then I thought I heard someone whispering. I wasn't sure, but when I heard it again, I got up and I, I, I looked all over the house. Oh, I'm not easily frightened, you know that, but, but out in the hallway... It was almost entirely black. Luckily, I was near a light switch. I looked back over my shoulder, and, and I saw this huge, hulking shape for the first time. And I heard a voice. Or rather, the whisper of a voice. I couldn't distinguish the words, but that dark shape seemed to be moving towards me. My hand was on the light switch, and I turned it on. In a minute, the light flooded the hallway. The shape was gone. There was nothing there. 
I was alone again. As long as there's light, I know it can't hurt me. I know it can't reach me. You might have imagined it, you know. Of course, that's possible, but I'm sure I didn't. It was so real. So real, that shape in the darkness. It was the very essence of evil itself. There was an old man I knew of, a Dr. Hesedius. I'd heard that he knew quite a good deal about the supposed supernatural manifestations which had taken place in the world. I went to him to see if he knew anything that might explain the events of the story Elaine had told us. Yes, my good sir. What do you wish? I have an appointment with Dr. Hesedius. Oh, yes, yes. He mentioned something about it. You are Mr. Drake? Yes. If you'll come inside. Thank you. Dr. Hesedius is in the study. Please come with me. Doctor, a visitor for you. Oh, yes. Bring him in. You may go now. Yes, Doctor. Mr. Drake? Yes. Sit down, please, in that chair over there. Thank you, sir. Now, what is the nature of your visit to me? Well, I understand, Dr. Vesedius, that you have a great knowledge of the supernatural manifestations which have occurred on the earth. Great knowledge, Mr. Drake? No, hardly that. I have only scratched the surface in my years of study. Perhaps I can help you, then again, perhaps I cannot. Well, may I tell you a story? By all means, my good sir. All right. Now, this didn't happen to me, Doctor, but to my fiancée. It seems that about six weeks ago, when she was alone... But when the light was on, the dark form disappeared. And that's the story, sir. As much of it as I can remember. Mm -hmm. I see. It's a strange tale to tell. I'm fully aware of that, Dr. Vesilius. You say she seemed to hear whispered voices? Yes, that's what she says. I see. A moment, please. I have a book in my file. Oh, yes. Here it is. This is the one. Yes. Perhaps I may be able to help you after all. Let me see This is a very ancient book, Mr. Drake. I seem to remember... Yes. Here is an account of a happening such as you relate. And we shall live on the earth... And they They shall shall not see us. Yes, Yes, it has been foretold by the ruler of the darkness. They who live by day... Retire to sleep by night... Shall never know that we walk with them. That we watch them... That we wait for our chance. Only in the night will they see us. For in the daylight we are not seen. Only in the night. When the darkness grows together. And the forms of the shadow people are shaped from the blackness. They will know us. Then they will know that we are their companions. For we are the shadow people. I knew I had read something similar to the story you have told me, Mr. Drake. Dr. Asilius, what can we do? Well, give me a little time. Let me see if I can find any more references to these uh, people of the darkness. One more thing, Mr. Drake. Be sure that your fiancé is never left alone at night. Be sure that there is some living thing, animal or human, which accompanies her every second of the night. For she is in danger, Mr. Drake. A terrible danger. Back now to our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Shadow People. That night, the night of the day I had seen Cecilius, Elaine's mother died. She died in her sleep. When she failed to appear for breakfast, Elaine's father went upstairs to see what was wrong. When he entered her room, he discovered that she was dead. The family doctor couldn't explain it, for Elaine's mother had been in perfect health. A few weeks later, I was out of the house spending a weekend with them. I glanced at the clock on the mantel, and it showed eleven. Eleven. 
I can't understand why Brian hasn't returned from town. Well, he said he had some extra work to catch up on. He told me this morning that he might be late. Well, 11 o'clock, I'm going upstairs. Glad you came out, David. It's good seeing you again. It's a pleasure to be here, sir. Well, don't stay up too late. See you both in the morning. Good night, Dad. Good night, Mr. Davis. He isn't the same, David. Ever since Mother died, he hasn't been the same. I didn't realize that until tonight. He's changed. I only hope that he'll start living again. Ever since she died, it, it seems that a part of him died with her. Elaine, have you been... I mean, have you seen anything else since you spoke to me last? No, I haven't. Ever since... Mother died. Nothing's happened. Well, I only hope. Came from upstairs. Come on. You don't. Think I don't know what to think. I only hope. David. It's... David, if anything's happened to him. We'll see in a moment. There's no light in this room. You wait here, Elaine. Where's the light? Over to your left. David, what's wrong? Why didn't you leave the light on? Your father's dead, Elaine. <laughs> I'd walked into the darkened bedroom. On the bed was Elaine's father. It didn't take a second look for me to know that he was dead. I switched off the light and walked back into the hallway to tell Elaine what happened. And then from the room there had come an eerie, quiet laughter... In the darkness of that room was some unknown evil power. The voice itself was unearthly. There was no substance to it. It sounded as if... as if it came from the darkness itself. No. No, I don't believe you. It's the truth, Elaine. There's nothing more I can do. We'll have to notify the police. Tell me it's not the truth, David. Tell me it's not true. I'm sorry, Elaine. I wish I could. Your father's dead. After the burial, Dr. Hesselius got in touch with me. He said that he wanted to meet both Elaine and Brian, that he wanted to talk to the three of us. Accordingly, a few nights later, he came out to their house. Davis, will you tell me just when you saw the first manifestation? The night Brian was in Detroit. No, Miss Davis, you have even seen this apparition in the company of other people, is that correct? Yes. The night at David's apartment. All right. Now I'll tell you what I think. You are in deadly danger, Miss Davis. These beings want to claim you. So far, they have had no success. Only in the darkness do they have the power. Little by little, step by step, they have been removing the obstacles in their way to reaching you. First your mother, and then your father, Miss Davis. Both died in the same fashion. In the darkness, death struck at them. Now tell me, do you feel their presence here in this room as I talk to you? Yes. Turn out the lights, Brian. No. Stand by the switch, if you please, Brian. If anything happens, turn the lights back on. All right. Dr. Vasilius, I don't... Do you want me to continue working with you? Yes, sir. All right, then. Brian, turn off the lights. Yes, doctor. The room now is in darkness, Miss Davis. Do you feel or see anything? No, I... Yes. Yes, I do. Do you see anything? Yes. Doctor, I don't... Be quiet, you fool. I know what I'm doing. In front of me. The darkness gathering together into a huge, terrible... Not only do you see us, Miss Davis, but everyone else in the room also will see the vague shapes forming themselves in the blackness. We do not want you, Dr. Hesselius. The girl we want. We advise you to drop this case. You will only bring down the wrath of the shadow people upon your head. The girl. We want the girl. Do not stop us. Let us take her now. Turn on the light. They're gone. Miss Davis, are you all right? Yes. Yes, I am. Just as she said. The darkness. I, I saw it form into something, too. So did I. What are we going to do, Dr. Hesselius? At the present moment, I don't know. But it's much I do know. You must leave this house immediately. 
You must try to get out of their reach. I don't know if that is possible. I hope it is. I shall have to return to my home. I must learn if there is some manner by which we can defeat these creatures. For the moment, leave this house. Dispose of it in any manner you may see fit, but leave this house. <laughs> Back now to our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled The Shadow People. We had spent the night in my apartment, the three of us. The following day, Brian and Elaine made arrangements to dispose of the house. In the afternoon, Dr. Hesselius called me and asked that I come to see him. David, I'm glad you're here. Anything new, Doctor? Yes and no. You realize, of course, that this spiritual manifestation is not new, that it has gone on for centuries. No, I wasn't aware of that. It's true, David. De Maupassant wrote uh, what was supposedly a fiction story about the manifestation, David. He called it uh, the Orla. However, according to the information here on my desk, it was taken from an actual case history. Of course, he embroidered the story, added a few touches to something he didn't realize actually existed. But have you found anything with which we can fight them? Everything depends upon an answer I received from a colleague of mine in Paris, Dr. Henri Renault. I dispatched a telegram to him last night. Why hasn't he answered by now? There are certain things that must be done. It will take a few days, I'm afraid. We have to wait, David. There's nothing else we can do. In the next few days, the house was sold, and Brian and Elaine moved into a newer, more modern home a few miles from my apartment. Cecilia said it might take a few days for them to build up their power. I spent the night at the new house. The lights were left on, and I watched for any unusual occurrence. In the daytime, I'd return to my apartment and get some sleep. About four days after Elaine and Brian moved into the new house, I was at home when Hesedius phoned me. Hello? David? Yes, Dr. Hesedius? I hate to tell you this, David. What's the matter? What's wrong? They were a step ahead of me, David. I just received word that Renault died or was killed. At the very moment I sent the telegram to him. <laughs> Step by step, they had outwitted us. For they had anticipated every move we'd make. Even Dr. Hesedius was at a loss as to what to do. He agreed to meet me at the Davis house. What did you want to see us about, Dr. Hesedius? Did you find out anything more? I'm sorry to say that I haven't. At the moment, I'm at a complete loss. I don't know what to do. But what did you want to see us about this evening? Merely to check, to see if anything else has happened. Miss Davis, have you seen or heard anything? Not in the house. Only in my dreams. Your dreams? Yes. When I go to sleep at night, in my dreams, in the darkness, I see them. And it's grown worse, much worse. I was hoping that it would not have progressed so far. There has been no disturbance in this house, but now they disturb your sleep, Miss Davis. Now, you must stay awake for as long as you can. I want the three of you to move into my house. Perhaps that will give you more protection. That night, we moved over to Vesilius' house. Perhaps Elaine would have more protection there. From there, we might be able to devise some plan of action, some way to beat those beings. For a few days, things were quiet. The shadow people seemed to have withdrawn. For a while, I thought that we might have succeeded in thwarting their purpose. Elaine no longer complained of troubled sleep. But that condition lasted for a few days only. About ten days later... They made themselves known and felt again. That night, we were in the study. When suddenly, Hesedius whirled around and... Elaine, what are you looking at? Outside the house. Right where the light waves off, I see them. She's right, Dr. Hesedius. I can see them, too. What should we do, Doctor? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? There's nothing we can do. We can't just... We can't do anything, Brian. Don't you understand that they have us at their mercy? The greatest man in my field was Henri Renault. If he could do nothing against them... What do you think we can do? He's right, Brian. There's nothing we can do. As 
long as the house remains lighted, just so long will they remain outside. If the lights were... <laughs> that sounds... Like... My father was killed. The same sound. We heard the same sound. The lights. What's happened to oh, the lights? Right? Be quiet, please. I thought of this emergency. A candle. That's right, Miss Davis. As long as this burns, this one candle will be safe. For they cannot advance into the light. They are limited by the darkness. As long as the candle burns, they will have to remain outside of this room. <laughs> Around you, in every room of the house, in the darkness outside, we are around you. This time you shall not escape. This time we will blame you. Take it easy, Brian. I can't stand it. I'm going after him. Stay here. We just can't let him go. He won't have a chance. I doubt it. <laughs> Miss Davis, I'm afraid that your brother is dead. <laughs> the wind, Doctor. Listen to the wind. I know. Yes, Doctor. Listen to the wind. You must realize by now that the three of you haven't a chance. You must know in your minds that we can destroy you at any moment we desire. But, Dr. Hesselius, you may still save your own life. Let the others go. Give them to us. No. No, you will have to take all of us. Shall we destroy your light? Shall we move? you now. <laughs> as you will. Do as you will. Sorry, David. The candle is out. In the darkness. The figure is in the darkness. and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. <laughs>